Ben Hutton and his lads now lead the Australians by two games to one following their sensational victory in the Melbourne Test. There can have been few more thrilling games than the third test. The issue hung in the balance until the Aussies began their second innings, needing 240 to win. Then Tyson took the ball. Tyson, the typhoon, hurled them down with devastating effect. Quickly the wickets began to tumble. Brilliant behind the stumps was Godfrey Evans, who took three catches. Brian Statham was the third man in the vanguard of England's attack. It was he who started the collapse. He bowled magnificently, yet claimed only two victims. Vice-captain Arthur Morris fell to Tyson. So did Benno, and Harvey, and Miller. Then three ducks, Maddox, Lindwall, and Johnston. Tyson's reign of terror had smashed the Aussies. Back in Middleton, Lancashire, his mother reads the headlines that acclaimed her son. Mrs. Tyson was interviewed by a reporter at her home. What was happening, Mrs. Tyson, when you first heard this great news? Well, I was in bed, and uh, I was getting up for the seven o'clock news, but the gentleman next door knocked me up at half past six to tell me the great news. And, of course, I couldn't get dressed quick enough then. And it's been all very exciting ever since. It's wonderful, I think. At 19 Valley Road, Frank Tyson lives with his mother, and each evening he exercises with Indian clubs to strengthen the right arm that gives him the deadly bowling speed that took seven Aussie wickets for 27. Some indication of that speed can be judged from his cricket boots. Heavy punishment gives them a short life. The right boot has a steel toe cap. Our reporter asks Mrs. Tyson the question that is in all our minds. And now what, Mrs. Tyson? What of the future? Oh, I don't know. I'm looking forward to seeing Frank again. For the wonderful reception he should get, and will get, I think. And you're very proud of him, I suppose? I am, as a mother, I'm very proud, and I'm sure all England is. <laughs>